You're a manager, you're a leader of a company, or you want to be. You're going to be solving some of the biggest problems that we're facing as a species. And then think about your employees that are much more similar to the folks that you might know from shows, TV shows like The Office or the movie The Office Space where people basically hate to be at work. They don't like to be engaged. They don't want to work with you. They mistrust you. And therefore, they don't believe in anything really that you're saying. Much like my students reacting to the statement on the purpose of a corporation that all of a sudden now says that people like Amazon, Bank of America, any other global organization like Walmart is now caring about each stakeholder and wants to be part of the solution to the global problems. It's very difficult to do that. But let me ask you about yourself. You may be working or you may be studying. You're part of an organization no matter where you are. Think about that organization that you're part of as a company and answer the question, I like working at my company. One is I strongly agree, two is I disagree, three is neutral, four is agree, and five is strongly agree. Note that for a moment. Another set of questions. I feel like a human being in that organization. I often feel like I'm fully alive. In my work, I'm treated as a person, not a human resource. I feel respected at work. Again, answer on a scale from one to five. Five strongly agree, one strongly disagree. Where do you land? I do this with my students. And the results differ. Sometimes I have executive students that are looking to change their jobs. They often fall into the spectrum of, I strongly disagree. I do not really feel fully alive in my work. I don't feel respected at work. I don't like the organization. Others feel privileged at their organizations. In some of the MBA programs, many people actually see their employer quite positive. Why does this matter? We call this employee engagement and the consequences of high employee engagement are very real <laughs> in terms of positive uh, customer experiences, productivity and profitability for the organization. And in reduced negative consequences such as absenteeism, turnover, costs, shrinkages, safety incidents, patient safety incidents, quality overall. So when people are engaged, when they like where they work, it's a good thing. Duh. Who would have thought? It seems so simple, yet there is an epidemic of low employee engagement. Gallup, a consulting firm, for a long time has uh, done consulting work with any type of organization across the globe to understand what kind of employees are working in these organizations. And they give a typology of three types. One they call the engaged employee. The engaged employee works with passion and feels a profound connection to their company. They drive innovation and move the organization forward. So these are the kind of employees that you really want to have, especially when you are a business leader that is trying to address these big challenges, global, environmental, social challenges. Then you have a different type of employee. Those are called not engaged. These employees are essentially checked out. They're sleepwalking through their workday, putting time, but not energy or passion into their work. 
if you know The Office, the TV show, those are the kind of people. They're not engaged. They're coming, putting in time, but not much passion and energy towards the work. And then there's a third category that Gallup calls actively disengaged. Actively disengaged employees aren't just unhappy at work, they're busy acting out their unhappiness. Every day these workers undermine what their engaged co-workers accomplish. If you recall the example of office space, where the employees hate their boss so much, hate their work so much, that they get joy out of undermining the company's goals, stealing money, taking a printer and trashing the printer. That's the actively disengaged type of employee. Now what does Gallup find in, in, in all its work across the globe? It's like, whoa, very few people across the globe in the workforce are actively engaged. In the US working population, it's around 29%. In an urban Chinese working population, it's around 12%. That's their finding. The large majority is falling in category two. They're not engaged. They're essentially checked out. They're sleepwalking. Look at the numbers for actively disengaged. In the US, that's more than half of the ones that are engaged, 16%. In China, according to this data, 20% of people are actively disengaged. That's more than the actively engaged persons. What does that tell you? Across the globe, there's a similar pattern. Global leaders need to face those facts. Very few people like to be at work. Some more data. Not engaged, you can see across the globe, 63% across the globe are not engaged. Only 13% on average are engaged. 24% are actively disengaged. Think about the costs for any organization. And think about the problems that these organizations are saying they're going to be part of the solutions of. How are you going to solve any problem with so many people being actively disengaged? It's going to be very hard. It is very hard. Now, let's look at how they actually establish this data. And I'm giving you a couple of uh, questions that they ask uh, people in these organizations. Do you know what is expected of you at work? Do you have the materials and equipment you need to do your work right? At work, do you have the opportunity to do what you do best every day? In the last seven days, have you received recognition or praise for doing good work? Does your supervisor or someone at work seem to care about you as a person? Is there someone at work who encourages your development? At work, do your opinions seem to count? Does the mission purpose of your company make you feel your job is important? Are your associates committed to doing quality work? Do you have a best friend at work? In the last six months, has someone at work talked to you about your progress? In the last year, have you had opportunities at work to learn and grow? These are different kinds of questions than most people are used to hearing when they're at work. Best friend, mission, purpose, are you in some way aligned with what the organization is doing? Do you care? Do your opinions count? Is there some way that you can learn and grow at your job? Why would you bother, bother at all as a leader to think about those things? If the economistic model were true, all they want is more money. And so you need to pay them more. Maybe give them some gimmick here or there, some free lunch, some good food, something like that. There is this myth that people are excited to do nothing, to be lazy. 
I did nothing today and I still got paid. Yay, yay, that's party. That's a signal of a good time. In fact, it's quite the opposite. People like to be productive. And when they're engaged, they are more so. They're more innovative. That means the company typically is more profitable. The environment is safer. There are better customer relationships. People that are engaged stay much longer with the company than less engaged employees. Seems intuitive. Firms with the highest percentage of engaged employees collectively increase operating income by 19% and earnings per share by 28% year to year. So even if you're thinking in very economistic terms of creating more shareholder value, you want to make sure that you have engaged employees because they make you more shareholder value. Those companies with the lowest percentage of engaged employees showed year to year declines of uh, 33% in operating income and 11% in earnings per share. That goes even more to that point, that if you want to maximize profit, you should have engaged employees and you should care about lowering the number of disengaged employees. Over a longer term horizon, the firms with the highest levels of employee engagement achieved a 37 increase in operating margins while those with the lowest levels of engagement suffered a drop of 2%. It does seem surprising to most of the leaders that yes, it is important to care. Now, this kind of comic cartoon strip, Dilbert, deals with that cynicism, with the low trust in, in the intention of of employers and leaders. Our corporate goal is to become one of the Fortune magazine's top 100 companies to work for. We want to have engaged employees and we hope to do it without giving you any additional money, benefits or freedom. Then how could you possibly motiv us, motivate us to say we're happy to work? It's the typical command and control, right? You're forced to pretend to like where you are. Put a smile on your face. If you're a bit smarter and more enlightened, you know that that's not going to work. It's going to backfire. It's not going to build employee commitment or trust at any level. Yet this is still the, dri the driving mindset, the economistic mindset. So we see that if you want to build employee commitment, trust in senior leadership is critical. Chance to use skills on the job is critical. Job security is critical. Competitiveness of rewards is critical. Quality of companies, products and services. The honesty, integrity of the company's business conduct. Absence of work-related stress, meaning and purpose. All of these factors that we talked about before that are relevant for trust are also relevant for commitment and engagement. This seems very simple and yet is a huge challenge to business leaders. Huge challenge to business leaders because they are stuck in their economistic frame of operation, of maximizing, of reducing cost and trying to maximize profit. And at the same time, most of their employees don't care about that goal. They don't feel engaged by that purpose, by that way of operating. Again, shifting to a humanistic perspective can probably help, where meaning is important, where bonding is important, where performance is important, and safety is important. I leave you with that for now.